Hi, my name is Will. This is an instructional video about Oyas. I'm no expert in the field and this summer 2013 will be the first time that I've used Oya jars. So this video combines the research that I've done, all the things I've learned about them, as well as my own experiments in constructing Oyas. And the goal is to basically spread information about this ancient technology so more people uh, know what they are. I'm just sitting here talking to myself in my living room, but you know, this is the 21st century, so I guess I'll just roll with it. Here we go. What are Oyas? An Oya is a clay pot that is buried mostly underground. The clay walls have a lot of holes in them and water can pass through. Water that is poured into the pot slowly seeps out into the surrounding soil where it is absorbed by the roots of the plants that are growing nearby. This irrigation technique delivers water underground and directly where it is needed. When the soil is less saturated with water than the clay is, the water will flow outward. When the soil is fully saturated, the water stops flowing outward. This means that the soil never gets too wet and it never gets too dry. Eventually, the roots of the plants will find their way to the clay surface and grow along it, and then the roots will just pull water out of the clay when they need it as much as they need it. This self-regulating system is extremely efficient and uses about half as much water as normal surface watering where a lot of your water evaporates or runs off before it is captured by the plant. Oyas also deter the growth of weeds because the surface soil remains dry, making it harder for new plants to sprout. So you'll probably want to plant things that have already been started and have roots, or you could plant seeds and surface water until the seeds sprout and the roots go low enough to be watered by the oya. Each oya should water outwards a distance about the same as its radius. There are some things that you also have to watch out for. If you leave them in the ground over winter, they might crack from the water freezing. Things with really thick roots, like trees, uh, might break them. And you have to watch out for plants with invasive root systems that could be growing far away, but the roots might uh, sneak in sideways and steal all your water. So you can also use them in raised beds and containers. Just use the same rule for spacing to find a container that's the right size. If you want, you can make a lid out of like a rock or a tile or something to put over the opening to keep water from evaporating out of the jar. You can also put mulch around the base of it to keep more water in the soil. You need to refill them probably every day or two, but it depends on how big they are and how much uh, water your plants are using. You can add liquid fertilizer or compost tea right into the oils and it will deliver it to the roots, but you have to be careful about particles because you might clog up the pores and decrease the effectiveness. If you want to use gray water, uh, you'll probably have to filter it a lot, and you should avoid letting the water uh, drop too low because minerals might build up on the sides. The exact lifespan of an oya is unknown, and it's subject to a lot of variables like uh, what kind of clay you're using and how much minerals are in the water, but it should last a couple of years at least. So why are oyas important and why should we use them? The simple answer is water. Oyas use less water more efficiently than normal agricultural practices. I live in the American Southwest where water is scarce and the weather is really hot and dry. On a normal day in the summer you can just like see water evaporate off the ground in a matter of minutes. You can get fined up to like $4,000 for wasting water. Other places such as the Midwest and the South have experienced record-breaking drought in these recent years. The climate is changing, the supply is being privatized, and clean water is going to get a lot more valuable in the future. The importance of this technology goes even deeper, too. Oya jars represent a more ecocentric environmental ideology, a way of seeing the world where humans are just part of this larger interconnected web of life, as opposed to the traditional western anthropocentric ideology where humans are at the top of a hierarchy and natural systems need to be conquered and nature only exists to be used by us. This attitude of unrestrained instrumentalism has led to the widespread exploitation of nature and the environmental decay that follows. Oyas are a way to work within the limits of natural systems, especially here in the desert. They are more respectful of resources and the environment, and they are sustainable. And sustainability is the cool thing to do these days. But how do you get Oyas, and where do they come from? Well, you can buy them on the internet. You can buy anything on the internet. Or, you might be able to find some at a local gardening store. There's a place called Growing Awareness Urban Farm. It's part of East Central Ministries in Albuquerque, New Mexico. They make Oyas, they sell them on the internet. If you get the chance to stop by in person, you should. They have a really cool Oya factory there, excellent operation going on, and they also have a lot of other really cool projects. Or you can make them yourself. There are several different ways you can make them using different resources and techniques. The first thing I tried to make these Oyas was the pottery wheel. 
I watched this tutorial and these are the Oyas that I made, they're all one solid piece. Then I decided to make some bigger ones, so I used two pieces, I threw the tops and the bottoms separately and I attached them later. It was pretty fun, but the pottery wheel isn't for everyone. The next thing I tried was the coil building method. I couldn't find one solid video tutorial to link to you here, but there is a lot of information on YouTube on coil building. This took the most amount of time, but the least amount of equipment. You could pretty much do it with a table and three tools. It ended up sort of saggy and uneven, so I gave it some worms. Also, these pots spend most of their time underground, so you don't need to worry too much about how they look. After that, I tried slip casting. This method takes a lot of initial work, you need to make a plaster mold and that can be really tricky. I decided to do a two-part mold. I watched some tutorials, I didn't follow all the directions, and I almost broke this one. But once you have your mold, you just pour in the slip, which is like a liquid clay substance. You let it sit for a while so it sets up around the edges, then you tip it upside down and pour out all the extra slips, you end up with like a hollow shape around the inside of your mold. You let that dry for a while, then you open up the mold and pull out your piece and clean up the edges. Uh, this one I rushed and opened the mold too quickly and tore the piece in half. Ah! If you can successfully cast things, it's an excellent way to mass produce oils or pretty much anything. This is the same method they use over at Growing Awareness Urban Farm, and this is how people make pretty much all the commercial products we use, like uh, cups and glasses and toilets and stuff like that. I used two of my thrown Oya pots to make my molds, but you could use pretty much anything really, as long as it's round and you're somewhat clever. All of these methods use wet clay, so you need to fire it before you can use it, otherwise it will dissolve. So you need access to a kiln of some sort, try a pottery studio or a clay store. Uh, I'm doing mine at the art studio at my university. Oyas need to be fired at a low temperature, cone 04, which is about uh, 1,900 degrees Fahrenheit. This will make the clay hard and strong enough while still allowing water to pass through. If you fire it too hot, it goes through vitrification, which is the process in which clay becomes watertight, and that sort of defeats the purpose for this project. The final method that I've tried is really popular on the internet and it's really easy. You don't need wet clay, you don't need to fire anything, all you need are some terracotta pots and some sort of glue. You just plug up the hole in the bottom and glue the pots together and it makes a jar. Here's an awesome video about this method. This guy also hooked them all up to one watering bucket making a really smart, easy to use, efficient irrigation system. The one thing that kind of sketches me out about this method is the glue. I used the type of glue that a lot of these websites recommended, and on the back it contained some pretty toxic stuff, at least in the uh, uncured state. It's supposed to be safe once it's dry, but if you're submerging this in water for potentially years and growing all your food crops off of it, I don't know, it might warrant some extra research. So that's it. That's about as far as I've gotten with this project so far. Um, I'm going to plant two raised beds and some other containers in a few weeks. I'm going to use the Oyas exclusively for watering. I'll post follow-up videos uh, over the summer and in the fall to let you know how it works out. And there's a bunch of questions I have now about this technology, and I'm sure anyone watching this can come up with some questions of their own, too. Like, what size of Oya works best? Do different shapes work well for different crops? Should you use different clay for different plants depending on how much water that plant needs? And how can you incorporate Oyas into larger sustainability systems? So do some research, do some experimentation, try different things out, and share whatever you find.